Good morning, good afternoon, good evening everybody. This is the first live session, training session for Forex Mentor Pro and this morning I have with me the team, all except Omar. Omar unfortunately hurt himself when a tree fell on his head. I've got Fotis with me in Crete. Good morning Fotis. Good morning Mark. Good morning Judith in the UK. Morning Judith. Good morning Mark. And we have Pierre with us in South Africa as well. Hi Pierre. Good morning everyone. Okay, just so to, we know that everybody can hear us, could you put in the chat box and just say, hi, sounds great. Tell us where you're from as well. We've over 150 people in here at the moment, so it'd be good to know where we've got everybody from. Rune in Australia says, hi, team, says Wolfgang. Alexander's in Austria. Klaus, not sure where you are. Anthony's in the UK. And I'm sure we'll have a gentleman in from Peru that we have with us every day. And Valerie... Lin Valerie's in Singapore and we have Lindley in South Africa, people from Florida, Hertfordshire, Hawaii, oh, grief, Wayne in Malaysia, Canada, hi Brad, uh, Perth is Sanka, and morning from London, Scotland. Okay, Gold Coast Australia as well. We've got everybody from all over the place. Okay, nice to see you all. Thank you for attending. The format for this first week will be that I will show you some setups that I've been looking at this week and other members of the team have been looking at. We were also going to show you the new system that we have created uh, for M2 and uh, Earth and Sky. And this is to do with an update for an indicator that Fotis has created and he's going to explain how that works as well. And we'll give you a little teaser about the one hour system that's going to be released next Tuesday as well. So in the meantime, if you have any questions, please place them in the chat box. What we'll do, we will answer them as we go along if we can. But if we can't, we will have a Q&A session at the end. So get started now. I'm going to show you some setups from this week that we had highlighted in the, the various blog posts. And also I'm going to show you some of Judith's as well. This was the euro pound, and if you looked at the Sunday analysis and also in the forum, I was showing you how we had a classic head and shoulders pattern. And I explained that with a head and shoulders pattern, what you were looking for, you are looking for the space between the head and the neckline. So if you've got the head, left shoulder, right shoulder, this is the neckline. You're then looking for a breakout to equal the same distance. Now, I wait for a pullback. That's my preferred method of entry. Judith, on the other hand, took this at 77.80, I believe, and made 130 pips out of this yesterday. And what Judith does, if I'll show you, this is her blog post from last night. And this is showing you where she entered. She entered at 7,800, 0.7800, and she's just got out this morning. And Judith uses an approach that is a combination of technical and fundamental. She does her detailed fundamental analysis on the blog on a Monday. And then on a Thursday, which is this uh, post I'm showing you now, what she's doing is she is using fundamental and technical analysis to take the trade. So when I was talking to her this morning, she was explaining to me this was to do with pound strength yesterday. There was some upbeat news on the pound. And combine that with the uh, head and shoulders pattern gave her added confidence to take that trade. Now, if you missed it, the way to play this on the daily is that you're looking for a pullback. And therefore, as, as ever, I want to pull back to the break area. So anywhere between 77 and 50, it depends you see, on this one. It could be this is the neckline, it could be that. So anywhere in this area for a pullback for me, I will take the trade. Now, what you could have done on a four-hour chart, you go down to a four-hour chart, and I missed this, but we had the initial breakout and then we've got the limited pullback back here. But if you're trading a pullback, you just need the old patience and discipline. And I also showed you in Wednesday's update, this is a break of a major trend line. And this is where Judith and Robbie got in, our trading duo. Uh, again, if you're trading this on a the weekly, then what you need is a pullback to this area. This is significant. This goes back to September of last year. This is potentially a major, major move on this pair. And therefore, if we get a pullback anywhere up here, we've got the potential potential 400 pips down here and possibly eight or 900 all the way down to the bottom. Therefore, this is highly significant. And there are a lot of trades at the moment, guys, lining up, all from weekly and daily that are similar scenarios. So we could be on for a very good run 
up to prior to the summer low, where usually July, August, we go into a ranging market. Now, let me show you here. This is the pound Aussie dollar. And the pound Aussie dollar, I showed you on Sunday that this is a major channel here. And this channel, it doesn't look very big here, but this is a channel of 500 pips. So I explained how we were looking for pullbacks in various areas, and I was concerned with this 55 EMA here. So what I was saying with this pair, I was looking for a breakout and then a pullback. Now at the moment, where's it stopped? Spookily to the pip at the upper trend line. But this is definitely a trade I will be looking for early next week or later this week if it happens for a pullback anywhere back down here because that way you're looking for a stop the other side of the trend line. We'll also look at fibs and EMAs on smaller time frames, but you're looking at a potential gain up here of 570 pips and it has done it on a number of occasions before. Now, those of you who prefer to trade from smaller time frames, I implore you, go to the longer time frames first. Make a note of important areas and lines like these and then make a plan for what you're going to do when price gets down here. Now, the new system that Fotis, Pierre and myself have been working on is aimed at helping you for those of you who actually struggle with the entries when you get back to an area. But this is a potential very big trade and there are a lot of them at the moment. Now just excuse me a second because I just need to take a drink of water. So Dapo was asking what's a pullback. Dapo, the pullback is everything that we teach at MentorPro. You need to study the education area. But in principle what it means is that you look for a break of an area as you can see here on the euro pound, price clearly breaks out of an area. You then look for price to pull back with the view to a continuation move down. And that is the M2 method and the earth and sky method. And STT is all about breakouts and pullbacks. Now, as I showed you, Judith took a trade from a continuation move. And Fotis often takes trades initially when price breaks out. So that comes down to you as an individual trader. What do you prefer? I prefer a pullback because you can then have a smaller stop and you have the chance of catching a part of this move. So for example, had you missed this move now and you jump in at the bottom, Murphy's Law is this will pull back before then continuing the move. So I personally, my trading style is to prefer to wait for it to pull back. Now, was it dollar yen on the subject of pullbacks? This was a classic move that I called. Those of you who were with us last year, when price was down here, I explained why, for multiple reasons, I had been looking for a pullback here on the Aussie dollar yen. And in fact, if we refit it back to the original move, you can see you have an intersection here of a major, major weekly trend line. You have the 61.8 fit just above and you have the 55 EMA and the 200 EMA, and the 55 is crossing. This is about as textbook as you can get for an M2 trade. And again, we're looking for as many reasons as possible, technically, why price is likely to react in an area. It did it previously on this move, and what we're looking for again now, we're looking for the same thing. Now, it did it back here, and those of you with us uh, for the previous months, when I missed this by a pip or two, which was spitting feathers because when it was down here, I was looking for the move, it didn't quite get there, and I missed the initial part of it. But here, price currently is stalling, it's going sideways. If it pulls back, this is a huge area of confluence once again. And these moves, guys, you're talking about this move here. Stop the other side of the trend line and the EMAs if you wanted to be conservative. Yes, it's 100 pips, which would scare some of you to death. But the potential for this trade was 800 pips down to the recent low. And as it went, as it was, it went to 120. And again, this is key when you're trading. It's all about the risk-reward ratio. If you are risking, I, I talked with a guy the other day. He'd been taught by some guru who was teaching a system that risked 40 pips a trade to win 20. Mathematically, you'll never make any money at it because three or four bad trades, and it can wipe you out and it certainly will wipe all the profit out. So you must be looking for trades that are going to give you at least twice what you're risking. But I've shown a lot of trades this week where you have the potential that they could make up to 10 times the risk. And on that basis, you don't need to make that many trades. Judith, for example, Judith used to average 20, 30 pips a trade. Now that she's combining fundamentals with technicals, 
she's averaging 300 pips a trade. And so far this month in May, she's made 445 pips from two trades. Now, I was asking a little bit earlier because six months ago, eight months ago, I spoke to her and she was doing very well, but she was bored. And <laughs> I spoke to her today. I said, have you got past that phase? And she said, I'm well past that phase now. We're in this to make money. We don't all need to sit there all day, every day. But if you like to trade, then make a note of the bigger areas and then go down to a smaller time frame. And as I said earlier, we're going to be showing you a new system that uh, FOTIS in particular has been created that shows some real, real great potential. So you will be able to trade longer time frame and or shorter time frames. Well, let's just have a quick look at some questions. Uh, Martin was saying, on the Euro GBP, how can you expect this pair to move down? Because GBP weak, Euro weak, hard to decide. True, Martin, but the, the catalyst the other day was positive pound news. And there's also talk now that the Brexit is likely to fail. It is messy, but technically that was such a perfect setup with the head and shoulders pattern. And as it is at the moment, it looks as though it's going to work. But at the end of the day, there's no guarantees. It could be wrong. It could fail. It could turn around tomorrow. You're working all the time on probability. You just work to the, to the point of view that if the probability is slightly more in your favor, then you take the trade. But you take the trade for multiple reasons. And as I explained, Judith took the trade because of the pound strength news and the technicals. And it's the combination of the two that's helping people to make such big gains. What else do we say? Mo was saying, how long do you let trades run? I got into this and made around 200 pips last time. Mo, I know you've not been trading very long, and believe me, 200 pips, I don't think I made 200 pips on the trade for the first three years of trading. So sometimes people can not realize how well they're doing. 200 pips for a relatively new trader is awesome. As far as how long to let things go, it really does come down to the trader. You assess, reassess the situation. Has anything changed news-wise? You keep your eye on other related pairs. And if you're worried or you're in doubt with it, one option is to take part of the trade off and let the other part run. But that really comes down to trading skill. And ultimately, at the end of the day, we can teach you lots and lots of methods. But there is, it's a bit like being a, car, a racing driver. We can throw you the keys to a Ferrari but you need to learn how to do it properly and you need to, to learn how to do it for yourself. Uh, just have a quick look through any more questions while we're here. Marius says, I have a problem with the trade which already is in profit and starts to go against me like the New Zealand dollar right now. And Marius, again, this is the issue that all technical traders face because we're never quite sure why price is doing what it's doing. The New Zealand dollar is a break and Judith again let's have a look at Judith got into this yesterday and I'm going to come on and show you uh, something in a moment on the New Zealand dollar. The New Zealand dollar has broken a major major trend line and it was at a uh, well it actually did it last Friday and if I, let's go to the chart. This was what I was showing you last week this was a perfect example of an M2 breakout you are looking for price to break and close below a major area. And again, those of you who've been with us for a while, I've had this in place for weeks and weeks and weeks. And what I said on Sunday in my analysis, after this break on a weekly chart, I am looking for a pullback here to take this trade. And this worked perfectly to the pip and is currently 70 or pips in profit. So this is the breakout, this is the pullback. Now, the overall target, hoped for target on here is down here. And the reason being, well, it's done it before, it keeps bouncing off the top and it keeps bouncing off the bottom. However, one way to deal with this, if, if it starts losing, for me, I was in this the other day, it came back and took me out and I got in again. Uh, but the other option with this is once you start to get into profit, you can scale out. You take some of the profit out of the trade and then you leave the balance to run, hoping to catch the big move. But this trade, technically, you've had the breakout. Now, for me, on this one on Sunday and again on Wednesday. What I showed you was I showed you how I had got in here. This was the big breakout. But I showed you that then during the week you look for a break and close of this major trend line. This is a daily trend line that goes back to January. So 
that break is significant. Then you look for the pullback. And for me, I wouldn't be entering until it gets back up here. Because again, breakout, pullback, hopefully move down. And again, the potential for this, if you put your stop the other side of the EMAs is only 30 pips. If you want to go mega conservative, it's 70, 80 pips. But the potential here is for a 500 pip drop down here. And therefore, you have to give a bigger trade, a longer time frame trade. You have to give it more time to breathe and space to breathe. And you've got to hold your nerve with it. The problem with retail traders is that they panic when it starts to go against them. They close it, they get out, and then they watch it go 500 pips. If you can pay more attention to the fundamentals and what Judith is teaching, it will give you that bit of extra confidence. But again, there's still no guarantee that it's going to work. But it's probability. And the probability on a technical basis, that is a very good setup. When do you move the stop loss, says Jasper. Again, Jasper, it depends on your strategy and it depends on your tolerance levels. Uh, a friend of mine used to have a system he would move the candle down. So if you got into the trade at the top here, he would move the candle down after the, the stop down after the daily candle close. And once this one closes, he would move it probably to here and then trail it down. Other people will simply move it to entry and leave it to go. And there is a, there is a cause for doing that. A friend of mine who's a, a, a full-time pro trader, he wins about 40% of the time, but he makes a lot of money because, as he says, he goes fishing and he goes for the big one. Now, I'm just going to interrupt now because I realize Fotis needs to get off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly show you the new setup and then we'll come back to some of this. Uh, Fotis has, has kindly donated a piece of software from his own system. It, this is like a light version of uh, what, what he uses in his own trading academy. And I think this is the chart. Wow, this is the chart. Now, one thing to note, before Fotis shows you all of this, this uses a lot of power on your CPU. So do not have this on more than one chart. You only need to have this on one chart. And what you can do is just remove all the other indicators if you want. But we'll go over to Fotis now. Just hang on with me while I uh, change presenters. And then Fotis will explain to you what this piece of software is doing and how it will help particularly for those of you trading purely technically, as it will help you to know where to focus. So just hang with me for a minute while I get focused on the line. Okay, hello, Mark, I'm here. Okay, I'm gonna make you presenter. You've got yes. no pictures of naughty Greek ladies on your desktop, no, no. maybe if I go to your screen. No, late, later in June, not now. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna make you presenter. We'll pass you over okay, to Fotis. thank you. Uh, for those of you who don't know Fotis, Fotis is a fund manager. He is a analyst and well an awesome analyst and he works from a using a top-down approach so what he does is he's looking at fundamentals first what's happening around the world what's happening in all related markets for example as he says if you're trading forex and you don't understand the bond market you're trading with your eyes closed so his approach is from fundamentals uh, Judith is one of his students who, who learned and took to this discipline very well as I explained earlier, that's helped Judith go from averaging 20, 30 pips a trade to hundreds of pips a trade. So just a bit of background for you there about Fotis. And I think I've made you present, I have I? Okay, just so everybody can there. see my screen. I have the Euro USD chart together with uh, the software. Can you all see this? Just let me know, please. Okay, this says yes, thank you guys. Okay, excellent. So when Mark said you, you only need to apply this to one chart, please listen to him, because I will explain what this algorithm is doing. So all you need to do is when you apply the template, use this, in particular, this indicator in one chart and do not use it on every single chart you open because it consumes lots of uh, CPU power and it will seriously slow down your machine. But let me explain the reason why. Why uh, is it slowing down? What's the algorithm behind this? So what we are doing here, we are trying to solve some practical problems that you face as traders. So what this algorithm is doing is analyzing all the currency pairs that uh, 
what you specify. For example, you have Euro USD, Euro CAD, Euro GBP, Euro uh, Australian, Euro New Zealand dollar, all the different Euro pairs. It's doing the same for the pound, the same for the yen, the same for the CAD. And then this algorithm is creating currency indices for each individual currency. So we have a USD index, a Euro index, a GBP index. Let me get in the indicator so I will show you. So do you see here the symbols list? I have all the different symbols where we use to create the indices. As you can see here, USD index, Euro GBP and so on. And then we use this to calculate the indices so that consumes lots of computer power. But why is this important? Why should we go into all this trouble to create this? Well, someone asked later why the euro is dropping against the pound. Why today we have this weakness? This is exactly what it reveals. It looks like a spaghetti. This is on the daily chart, but it shows you the strength or weakness of each individual currency. Can you imagine having to scan 30, 40 different currency pairs? Where should you focus your attention? You have so many charts. If you have even one uh, system and you have 30, 40 different charts, it is likely that you might get confused. Why choose, for example, the Euro GBP instead of the Euro USD? Why choose that particular currency to trade instead of another one? So what this is doing, it is measuring the strength of each currency pair. You will see today, I have set it on a longer time frame. It scans the currency indices in the last 20 days. Make it larger so you can see better. What you can see, the pound is the strongest performing currency in the last 20 days with the yellow color. You see here the, the one with, uh, that shows the, the weakest performance is over here. If we scroll the mouse over, it's the Aussie. Aussie is moving down. Who else is moving down? It's the New Zealand. It's the CAD. Who is moving up? It's the pound. Uh, it's the USD. The Swiss is going to move up. Now, on a practical level, who wants to tell me why this is important? to know the currencies that are doing best and the currencies that are weak. Why are we doing this? If you want, it, even if you are new or experienced, please let me know what you think. Mo is right, very good. Yes, Mo, Marius, uh, Jim, Dapo, yes, and Rob, and Morris, Alexander, yes. What you need to do is you need to remember that what you see here is not one currency. This is not Euro USD. This is the Euro currency against the USD currency. And you see their difference. What you see here is uh, the strength or weakness between two economies. That's what you see. So can you imagine how dramatically it will increase your probability of success if you are able to look just in one chart and know and which currency is underperforming or overperforming, or if it is doing better. What you will do is you, you will become a matchmaker, match a strong currency with a weak one. And this ties very well with peer system, it ties very well with fundamentals, it ties very well with mark system, with the hourly uh, system he will show you later, because it helps you to find straight away in, 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 in just a few seconds where to pay attention. What you can do, my suggestion would be don't overdo it and try to look in, uh, in very small time frames. The smaller the time frame, the more noise you are going to get. For example, if you start uh, thinking, oh, let me start uh, analyzing one minute, five minutes and use this, you will not get the best results. This will work very good if you are working on four hour and daily charts. What you can also do is you can go inside the indicator and you can change the period. The smaller the period, the more noise. What I like to see is I like to examine 20 periods on a daily because that corresponds approximately to one month. So I use this to then estimate where I can have support or resistance in the currencies, where to pay attention. 
And as you can see, you can change the period from here. Uh, what is very useful is this is for the four hour. Let me move to a smaller time frame, the four hours. You have to wait a few seconds because it is doing all the calculations. Even if you do it like this, what is this telling you? Please remember that the period separator is a period of one week. So every box you see here is one week. So what you see here is that in this week, the pound is the best performing currency together with the USD. Those two are the best. So I want to match this week those two best performing currencies against the weakest. Who are the weakest? It's the yen, the Aussie is moving down, which one is this? Uh, the Canadian is moving down because also the Canadian, uh, sorry, crude oil is moving. So because I have a knowledge of fundamentals, I can also understand straight away in a few seconds what is happening. Wh why is this important? And we also have created another piece of software uh, at the Fortis Trading Academy where this matchmaking is done automatically. So we have this matrix that tells us exactly where to pay attention and if the trend is right. Uh, look, for example, Euro GBP that Mark was mentioning before is at the bottom with a very negative score. This is telling us sell the Euro GBP is very weak. You can also see this here. So this is very useful and I'm going to answer some questions now with regards to this. Jim says, but how would you know when it is going to turn from strong to weak? Okay, that's a good question. Let me show you what I'm watching. This tool is not a trading system on its own. This is not supposed to give you signals. This is supposed to be to work like a radar, to give you an alert, uh, to help you focus at the right currencies. We, we use this in combination with the technical systems that you are going to see in a while. What is important to this is the direction. Okay, so when I see that, take a, a look at the yen for example, this, uh, this month over here. The yen is moving up, is very strong and suddenly starts turning down. So I'm interested in the direction, just like you would do with the RSI with the stochastic, with any oscillator. So the direction is important. When it starts pointing down, I pay attention. We could have a top in place and I'm looking for signs of exhaustion of this move and a potential signal to sell the yen. Uh, look here, the, the Canadian dollar, because of the rise in crude oil, look, we had a change in trend, it's moving up. So when it is going to to make a top and we have a direction, I start paying attention. It will not work all the time, but it, it gives us very high probability trades that if you use together with peer system and the new systems that uh, you will be introduced today, it will help you enormously. Rob says, sorry, let me, uh, Mo says, can you use larger time frames like weekly? Yes, you can time frames weekly. Okay, I hope I won't crush anything. <laughs> you have to wait now because it will have to do all the calculations. So there you go. So what you need to do is adjust it at your trading plan. That's the important thing. The larger the time frame, the longer it will take to give you a signal. Usually I think daily is fine to work with this. Rob asks, do it not show the moves is possible over? Yes, but yes, you can also use it in this way, Rob. You can use it to signify when the move is possible over and also when you have the beginning of the move, when you start moving above or below the zero line. Yes, you are right. Uh, Ferdi says, hi, Fortis, I'm using CSM for strength, 25 periods for calculation. How come on your chart New Zealand is the weakest while mine shows it's the third strongest? So which one are you using exactly? When you say CSM, would you like to tell me what you mean for this? Currency strength, oh, you mean the currency strength meter. Yes, that's a similar indicator that is using an oscillator. I think this is different because we use a mathematical formula. This is not based on, uh, on momentum or RSI or anything like this. The calculation is better. Uh, you also might get different results because maybe your uh, your interval, the period you use is different for your time frame. 
So that's possible. It's not uh, something that cannot happen. Uh, it says what is the yellow line at zero? The yellow line at zero level is the level zero. We have no change. You see, this works like an oscillator. It oscillates up and down. The zero line is when the, the currencies are dead. <laughs> Nothing happens at the zero line. So we have a move just like, for example, momentum. Above 100 or below 100 or, or other indicators that use the zero or the 100 line. Thank you, Greg. Uh, John says there are many heat map indicators available. How is this superior? It is not superior. All indicators are very good. You see, it is like, uh, John, if you remember when we were kids, we, I like to play basketball and, you know, we would we like to watch Michael Jordan, so we thought if we, if we bought the, the best new Jordans, we would uh, play basketball like him. What we are giving you are tools to make your life easier. It, it, they are supposed to help you create a trading plan that will lead to successful trades. Your success doesn't depend on the indicator. Your success depends how you use them and how good is your trading plan. Your, the, your success depends on you only. Uh, that's why, we, so uh, when we, I say superior, when I used this term, it, it was in reference to a particular indicator uh, that I think uh, Ferdi mentioned before. There are some similar indicators that are using momentum for the calculations. So I was just saying in reference to this that from a mathematical viewpoint, this is better uh, than the other indicator. I'm not saying that the technical there are technical indicators that are superior than anything else and will lead you to riches. No, not at all. Uh, Fran says, how many currency pairs do you use for this indicator? Okay, very nice question. And this is uh, something to pay attention, please. All right, let me go to the indicator list. You might install this and you might see that it doesn't work. Let me explain the reason why. When you first install this indicator, it comes with some specific currency pairs inside the symbol list. If your broker doesn't include one of them, it is not going to work. So you need to right click on your chart, go inside the indicator menu and delete the currency pair that is missing from your broker. For example, you might not have Aussie CAD or Aussie Swissy. Just delete this and continue and it is going to work. So please pay attention to this. Maybe also your broker uses other symbols. It is not like this. Uh, some people, some brokers use Aussie Yen Pro, for example. They might have a prefix uh, at the end. So just take this into consideration and make sure you use the same symbols uh, that your broker uses and you are using symbols that exist in your broker. I repeat, if your broker does not have one of the symbols, it is not going to work. Uh, Zolst says, is there some kind of extreme area regarding this indicator? Uh, no, we don't have extreme areas. What I like to watch is when we have a, an overshoot like this, for example, here in the yen, I like to pay attention when it starts moving down. The direction is very important for me. Uh, Ayrton says, isn't this like a sentiment indicator that shows what others are doing and it is time to enter the opposite trade? You can use it like this and it's going to be very useful when you use uh, the earth and sky system, for example. So when the sentiment is overdone and the move is exhausted to take the opposite move and have a very good high probability trade. Yes, so you confirm what I say, but it's all part of, of the trading plan. Ferdi um, says, I use a limited account that does not contain all the currencies it only has free GBP currencies. Could that influence the calculation? It can influence the calculation. It means that in the pound calculation, for example, it's just going to use those free currencies. That's all. Uh, let's see some other questions. Mario says you have daily for how many days? 20 days. It's a 20-day period. Uh, 
Dapo asks, is this going to help you determine your entry exit points and where to place your stops? No, it, this is like a scanner of the market. It is used as a radar and it is not a system to give you entries and exits or stops. ED asks, is this indicator just sitting on the chart or related to the chart above? No, you place it on a chart. What you are going to do is just place it on a chart and have it on its own, like this. Do not attach it on every different chart because it's going to slow down your computer. Uh, John says, thank you, wise answer, appreciated. Fran says, can you reduce the maximum bars display? It is working fast, faster. Yes, Franz, you can do this. If you go here, and thank you for this, if you go here inside the indicator, you will see, we say maximum bars display, 1,000 bars. If you use 500 bars, yes, you are going to look back the look-back period is going to be shorter, but your computer is going to work faster. So you can do this. Uh, some other questions? Uh, okay, Mark will tell you where to download the indicator and all the other system software. Mark says, can we look at the GBP Aussie chart as this is currently at the extremes on the indicator? Yes, we can do this when Pierre is doing his uh, bit later to show you with Verf and Sky to show you uh, where is support and resistance because you are right. Right now, Pound and Aussie are at the two extremes. So one currency pair to look is GBP Aussie. So we can use then the other systems that are appropriate to pinpoint the entry and manage risk to tell you where you are supposed to do business. Alan says, this, this is the custom indicator section on MetaTrader. Yes. Yes, Alan. Alvin says, these are all major pairs. Any minor pairs like Singapore dollar to be included? Alvin, uh, I have included, uh, in my version, I have another MetaTrader, and I am using the Singaporean dollar. Uh, as long as your broker does have these symbols, you can go inside here and create any index you want. You can add, for example, you can delete Swissy, add SGD, the symbol for Singaporean dollar, and make sure you include some uh, Singaporean dollar pairs over here. So yes, it can be done. Jim asks, would a shorter look back, oh, yes, I think we mentioned this, yes, to, you can go and use 500 periods instead of 1,000. Yes, it will be uh, from the downloadable from the members area, correct. Okay, thank you very much for that, Fotis. Uh, we thank need you, to Mike. Make, make me back as presenter. A round of applause for Fotis, everybody. Thank you for breaking into his trading morning. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, Lots of questions about downloads and things. It will all be in the members area tomorrow. Uh, unfortunately, our tech guy, Larry, is in deepest Peru at the moment, and there's something we need from him. So as soon as he gets to an internet connection. So tomorrow, we'll send an email out, but you will be able to download all of this. So when I'm ready to show my screen, hopefully that's what we'll be able to see in a moment. Yep, we're back on my screen. Okay, um, thanks very much for Fotis, as I said, he has to leave us now, and uh, I'll go back to where we were, and then Pierre and I, we're running out of time now, actually, but Pierre and I will show you our new layouts as well. Thanks, Fotis. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. So, we were looking at weekly trades, one of which was the USD Singapore dollar that somebody's just mentioned. Now, again, Judith beat me on this one. <laughs> she took this and it's in her blog post from this morning uh, she wrote it yesterday and she showed you where she's got in she got in here at the 36.80 point I was showing you on Sunday why I was looking for a break above 3800 and again I will be looking for a break and a pullback but we've had a triangle breakout here and the theory goes with the triangle breakout that the distance of the move will equal the distance of the triangle and so far it's done 250 so in theory it should do 300 and it's surprising because uh, these things do work but you can't you as ever you can't pin your you pin your shirt on it right final ones to look at this is the S&P 500 we've been showing you this for months now how shorting at the top here has worked and it has worked on numerous occasions for big big moves and again it happened again last week and if you're in here at the moment, then you're well up. And again, there is the potential here for a big move. And going back to the question earlier about what do you do about stops and things, you either take some off or follow it down or even leave the stop here. 
It may come back and take you out, but the other side of it would be that you would be at no risk with a potential huge, huge gain. And I was reading a report yesterday by a very well-known economist who was explaining that technically this is looking very, very bearish. So it could be you're on for a big one. But that would take nerve and bottle to do. And again, this is the problem for retail traders. They get 20, 30 pips in front on something, and they start to panic, and then they get out. And that is how the brokers make the money. There was a survey by FXCM in 2012, and they revealed that 60% of trades taken by retail traders were winners. But the problem is that a retail trader, his losing trades are bigger than his winners. So again, it is all about risk versus reward that we keep drumming into you. Now, the final ones, let's see if there's anything else on here. Your USD, your USD, a few weeks ago I showed you why we were shorting at 114.50. It was a to the pip entry and it went oh, 200 odd pips last time and a nasty spike the other week. So there was a loss here again last week. There was a winning trade here. If you've missed all of that, this is now at a major, major trend line break as I've just shown you on the euro pound and on various other pairs at the moment. These are some significant, potentially very big moves, guys. And therefore, if you're trading this on a weekly, you must wait for the candle to close below. And then you want the pullback, and then you're looking for a short. CAD, CAD is attempting very similar to the USD Singapore dollar at the moment. And I showed you again the other week about this. The problem for me here is I wouldn't take it here because the risk reward's not there. I would be looking for a stop maybe down here. And there's a good chance that it will probably bounce off the 200. So for me, the more conservative entry here would be a break and close above, and then a pullback. Other things, Japanese yen. The worry here with the yen is that the BOJ may intervene, but technically it's come back up to a area with confluence. And if we fib this, looking at that, that's going to be 61.8 fib. And therefore, you've got lots of reasons at the minute to be thinking of shorting it, although fundamentally I wouldn't be in a rush to do so. Right, new setups. In fact, we best get Pierre involved. Uh, this is my new version of the M2. And what I've done with this, to make things easier, particularly for new people, I have used added Pierre's trigger bar and Pierre's stochastic layout. And the reason being is that with, that, with the, the trigger bar, it's based on MACD. All I'm looking for here is diversion. And let's have a look. MACD diversions. And at the moment, we've got some. And divergence is simply that here, you can see that we have a lower low. So here is a lower low than that point here. Price is clearly moving down. MACD divergence, however, the lows are at the same point, And therefore, there is a suggestion that this is likely to bounce back up. And we have below here a daily 55. So there's lots of reasons why a swing trader would be interested to take this back up again. So that's all I use that for. And stochastics, I rarely use stochastics these days, but basically it's saying once you're in the bottom zone, it's oversold, and once it's at the top, it's overbought. So it's just a clue that it might move back down. But look here, this was in place for days and days and days before the actual move took place. And then at the bottom, I have Fotis's spaghetti. But as we said before, and I'm no doubt people, we're going to get tickets, you must pay attention to what we say to you. Do not have this running on more than one chart at any one time. Okay, so you just have one chart for the spaghetti, and you could even turn that chart off on the morning if once you've done your analysis. So, but anyway, that is the chart. The other thing is that for, we've been testing this with some older members, as in people being with us for a while, and quite a few of them still prefer the white charts. So we're going to send this out as it is, but Pierre is going to make a video showing you how you can convert this back to white if you prefer. And then we'll decide next week whether to do our analysis in black or white, depending on how many people prefer the new one to the old one. Now, I'm going to hand you over to Pierre in South Africa. Uh, hopefully this will work. So just bear with me a second, and Pierre is going to show you a few things with his Earth and Sky system. Hi, Pierre, are you there? Morning, Mark. Yes, yes, I am. Oh, yes, yes. Sorry, I thought you were snoozing there in your jungle hammock. Right, <laughs> I'm going to make, make you a presenter now. 
Uh, Pierre's in South Africa on the coast, a lovely town on the, on the coast down there. And here we go, main new presenter. We should be able to see your screen in a moment. Okay, guys, it's my first web webinar, and I must be honest, I'm like a bull in a china shop here. I'm scared I'm breaking something. I'm six foot two, so uh, my boy's 13 years old. He's the same length, and yeah, between us, we always break stuff. Template stays the same, basically, as Mark mentioned. Um, we just have a black background for now. I already made a video clip where you can change the background to white. I personally prefer the white background because it's then easier to place my little boxes there. The template itself, as um, Mark said, we've got the spaghetti indicator going with it. Photos mentioned that we need to look only at the dailies. When we go to smaller time frames, it's, there's too much noise for it. A nice trade that I took this week was on the Aussie US dollar. And if we quickly do an Earth Sky method here, in the beginning of the week in my write up, I said to you guys on Tuesday that I will flip the four hour chart from the high that we had in this area here to the low that we made. And price pulled back nicely into our potential trading zone. Early in the week, we hit that weekly pivot point, which is in that area there. Also, the 75% flip at 7362. If you look to the left of the chart, we had a bit of previous support resistance there. Oilinger band was there also this 55 EMA. Now, what I like to do is once we get to potential trading zones, like for instance in this pair, if I drop down to the one hour, once we get to important levels, I like to look for my D divergence. And I absolutely love pivot points, guys. When I started off, I didn't use pivot points, and that is like trading in the dark. For me, when I put my pivot points, it's like a football field. I know where the sidelines are. I know when I need to go and look for, for trades. And this was a perfect example. We went into the potential trading zone this week, and look at that. We touched the weekly pivot point at 7361. McD was high, and Stochastic was turning over here. Now what we add to the new template, which we didn't have before, is that you guys know that by now that's been following me for a while. I like to take trades once I've got confirmation. Now there's a couple of ways how you can wait for trades for confirmation. One's been looking at trend line breaks, but I've been using a 1226 EMA cross. Now over the years we found that a 1226 might sometimes bite you, so we changed it to a 327. And what we added to this template now is a ribbon indicator, which is basically the 27 EMA cross, and then this little indicator here. So every time there's a cross, you will have this arrow coming up. And what's cool about this one is if you hover over the arrow and you right click and you open it, you can, only, you can go to the inputs and there's an alarm that you can change from false to true. So once the cross, so let's, for argument's sake, we found now the earth and sky trading zone. We wanted to short, but now you don't want to sit in front of the computer the whole day waiting for that cross to happen. So you can change that and just say, okay. So as soon as we had the cross here, the alarm went off. And this was a perfect trade, guys. We had confirmation, we had the cross, and our first profit take would have been, I'm just going back to the four hour chart, Sorry guys, this is Africa, internet usually slow here. Yeah? There we go. So we got the entry on the smaller time frames at that 50% pivot point. The first major profit take would have been at last week's low. If you look to the left of the chart, that was last week's low. And then this is a key level, 7213. Okay, we can see Stochastic is already over salt here. Yeah? And we are at the Bollinger Band. So that's the main area where I want to get out and this trade from confirmation to the pivot point gave us over 100 pips. Now if I can make 100 pips a week I'm very happy. Um, I know some of the guys are still struggling with stops and that thing, that type of thing, but we are going to make more videos in the education tab. Let me just go to the 30 minutes quickly again. Just to explain guys, this is why we say only run the spaghetti on one chart because this is when it slows it down. It, it's, it's very noticeable when you're switching from one chart to another. So for, for sure, delete the indicator. And to do that, you just go into indicate, well, right click on the chart, go to indicators and just delete that indicator. So you don't want it on every chart. 
keep going for you. Okay, cool. 12, order 1327 EMA cross. That was the confirmation for me. My stop would have been on the other side of this high area here. So if we quickly have a look at that, we had a stop of about 35 pips. First profit was 78 and the second profit take was about 130 pips. So that was an awesome trade for me. Now as Mark mentioned, some of you guys like white backgrounds. This is the template with a back a white background. I showed in a video clip how you can do it. Um, it's just for me, I, it's better to do this on a white background because I can easily put my FIPS in, change that into black and if you put this there, you can just see the contrast much easier. If we quickly look at the pound US dollar, now this thing had a big rally over the last year, the two days guys and once again, pivot points are key for me. Now using photo spaghetti indicator, we can see that we are busy flattening out. So if you only had a look at this indicator, why are we flattening out? Because look at this, price is hitting a weekly third pivot point and that is a big roadblock third. If we look to the left of the chart, previous support resistance in that area too and depending on which time frames or which brokers you guys are using on my Forex L LTD, there's a 200 EMA at this level as well and if we drop to a daily chart, just waiting for that quickly, there we can see we have a 200 EMA there in the way and if we look to the left of the chart, previous support resistance a couple of months back as well. So all in all that uh, indicator, spaghetti indicator, I think it's going to help us a lot with our trading. Um, the new template, the confirmation, you guys that's been trading with me for quite a while, the guys that's hanging out in the forum, I know Crosby is using a 1226 or a 1327 cross now these days as well, he's doing very well with it and I'm very excited with all the new indicators and all the new things that's coming for Forex Winter Pro. Just want to show you quickly before we go again, remember the pound US dollar is negative correlated with the pound or the euro pound. We quickly have a look at the euro pound and Judith mentioned that she already got out of this trade morning I think and this is a key level, there's still room for it to go down but that's a key level, that's the daily 200 EMA and that can form big support and that is what Mark will wait for for price then to pull back to this area 7755 where we have the monthly 200 EMA pivot points, that type of thing and that will be an M2 short setup there. Well, I think that's me for now, Mark. You can take over. Thank you very much. You did very well there, didn't you? <laughs> didn't, bra didn't break anything. I'm very no, proud of myself. Not, not yet. Don't touch anything too much. I will take it back. <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> we were a bit worried between me and the Canary Islands and Pierre in South Africa and, and Botis in Crete, we were, none of which have the best technology in the world, whether this would all hold together. But that was good. Right. Thanks, Pierre. I'll take it back now. Thank you. Okay guys, uh, we're running out of time. <laughs> Alexander says it's so difficult as an Austrian to hear this different English. <laughs> yeah, with Pierre, Pierre and, and folks is strangling the English language. I, of course, from the north of England, speak it perfectly. The Queen's English, this is proper Queen's English. <laughs> but yeah, we have people from all over the world, so it can't be easy. And we're getting questions like, will the replay be in the, the website? Yeah, the replay will be inside the education area, we create a new section at the bottom for all the live training sessions. The, the software will be available tomorrow to download, but probably tomorrow afternoon UK time. I will send an email out to people uh, to let them know when it's available and uh, say so we just need to get a hold of Larry, he's gone to Michu Picchu in Peru and it would appear that uh, the Incas didn't have too much on the way of internet connection, so you know, they did kind of screw things up a little for us. Um, but they, that also with the software, the software is attached to the membership software now. So you will also need to make a note of your account number, and you can find your account number up here, the top left of MetaTrader. That is your account number. And again, there's a video to show you how to attach this to your account. And as long as you remain a member, all of this is included free of charge. And John, I think, was asking earlier, what's so great about this? Well, one of the great things about this is that, A, it's an awesome piece of software, but B, it's free. So <laughs> that was a definite benefit for that one. Right, I'll just give you a very, very quick 
flick through to the new one hour system. This will be released on Tuesday of next week and this system, Pierre and I have been playing with it, Fotis was the original brains behind it and then we've been looking at it and playing with it. And we, we have a few ideas that have been added and a few more that Pierre and I were talking about yesterday who think this could help. And again, this is not a standalone system. If this was a standalone system that worked in its own right, it would be an EA. The whole point of all of this is that you are learning to trade and there is an element of your skill involved in this. And what you are using is you are using the spaghetti in the first place to look for strong against weak currencies and where to focus. And for example, in the last few days, this is the we're trying to look at changing the colours on this because the colours can be quite brutal. But this is a Euro USD. And the Euro USD, depending on what we took for the entry signal, but the entry would be around here the other day, and you are still in here 260 pips later. On the up move, it went 260 pips. And this is on an hourly chart, guys. And if you scroll back, we have periods where everything goes horizontal, where you leave it alone, and particularly here was a good example, but again here you're looking at 250 odd pit moves. And the idea behind this is that you can use it as part of the puzzle. And for example, one version that we have with this is to include all the recent highs, daily pivot points, weekly lows. And again, we need Larry just to change a few things here. But with this, you then have the major, major areas of support and resistance. And for example, the other day, Pierre and I were watching this in real time. It was moving sideways, all the indicators were indicating sideways, and it was a major previous area of support and resistance. Now, once that broke, that then gave you the confidence to get in, and at the moment, that is 100 knot pips. And something like this on an hourly, you are looking at 20, 30 pip profit, um, stop on average. So the potential for this is huge. And I was watching this in particular on the Aussie dollar the last few weeks because the euro was a little more erratic. But look at some of the moves here on the Aussie dollar. Breakout from the, the box at the top, you either take the break below a recent low, but we will explain all this to you next week. So that's a 200 odd pip move. It was another, this was 200 pip move up. This was a, a 70, 80 pip move down, a 50 pip move up, then horizontal leave alone. And this one, I think this was a really nice one last week that we caught on demo. This was a 350 pip move. So, lots of exciting things to come. Please don't ask for it in advance because it won't be given out. It will be given out to everybody on Tuesday. And next week's live session, we will go into detail of explaining how to use it. The other thing is, it is in beta. It is to be tested on a demo account. We are not suggesting people dive in and start trading this on live. And despite the fact I've just told you that, I know some of you will do it. And if you do it and it comes and bites you on the butt, then you deserve to lose. This is a serious piece of software. We are trying to teach people to trade professionally and to do this properly in a structured way. If you can take on board some of Judith's fundamental analysis, you take on board what the currency strength indicator is showing you, you're then looking at support and resistance. And trading is all about support and resistance in its many forms. And that can be horizontal, it can be trend lines, it can be Fibonacci, it can be EMAs, a whole plethora of things. But it's all, all about support and resistance, and it's all about risk management. As I explained to you earlier, you are looking for trades with the potential to make a minimum twice what you have risked. Okay, can you explain what the indicators on the new system? We will explain them next week, Rob. Uh, Zishan, Zishan asked a question. I can't, in fact, oh, I just got a question mark from you, Zishan. I can't see quite an actual question. Um, yes, the replay of the video will be in the education area news section later today. Has someone been finger painting? <laughs> I, I'm not sure if there's LSD in the tap water in Greece because fact is everything he makes is so multicolored. And Pierre and I looked at the first test and we've got to tone it down, but we haven't as yet come up with it. The problem is if you change the colors too much, it makes the box, it, they, the lighter color disappears in the box. But yeah, I know you're coming from Greek. <laughs> 
Thomas, yes, the webinar is recorded. We'll be in the members area. Uh, Peter says, hi, Peter. Not seen you for a while. Peter from Holland. Thanks. Pierre says, Peter. Nothing. I just responded to something else. Sorry, Zee, I missed the original question. Only works on one hour and not four hour. Alexander, it, it's beta, so it's there to be played with. It was made to work on uh, uh, one hour, but I, I was playing it with myself yesterday, and on, on a four hour, it does seem to have potential. And, and, and what we do in the Fotis Trading Academy, we have an awesome piece of software. Alex, you're, Alexander, you're a mentioned member there with the F1. And what we often can do with the F1 is you use the smaller time frame to get into the trade, and then you use the bigger time frame to stay in it. So it's not certainly something designed for daily, and I'm sure people will try it on daily. It's there to be played with. But for example, here on the Euro USD on the one hour, you could have used it to get in. So let's say we're up here and we're at 150, 160. <laughs> Here, somewhere up here, it must be up here, right, so up here, as yet, on the four hour, you haven't got a signal to get out, so I think that it has good potential for entries, and then to stay in, and, and this is partly being designed, because we have a lot of members who watch mine and Pierre's analysis, and they say, and I get emails from people saying, I saw the analysis you did on that pair, and it was an 800 pullback, pit pullback, and I watched it, and I, and I thought, wow, and then I got scared because it was going so fast, I didn't take it, and then I missed it. And therefore, the idea behind this, we're probably going to call this the F&P trigger system because the idea is that if you're looking at the longer time frames for, for support and resistance, this is going to help people with entries. So yes, you can use it on different things. Uh, thanks for the recall. Well, it's a light version, Perry, but yes, uh, it was very generous of Fotis to give that over for us. Uh, he's a very, very talented guy, very knowledgeable guy, and also very good at creating systems and software and things. Uh, and we will have some more goodies from Fotis as we go along. Right, so that was the first session. Thank you to everybody for attending. Thank you for Fotis, Judith and Pierre helping to support us. Uh, thank you, you guys rock, says Greg. That's well done. Thank you very much. He's, 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 he says, really awesome. Edie in Singapore. Not spoken to you for a while either. Edie, nice to hear from you. Uh, Hamish said, Hamish said, Hamish, I live in Spain, so everything's pronounced phonetically. Hamish Johnston, that was the clothes steward. Uh, thank you for the good stuff. Said, um, right, we will be hosting these every week going forwards, and what we will do next week will be for the new software, this one-hour system, and then after that we will start to cover specific topics. So if people have ideas for specific topics, put them in the forum. Get into the forum, have a word, chat with Pierre, He's in there every day, a skilled, skilled trader. And to give you all a bit more confidence about the fact that you can all achieve this, Pierre originally joined us as a member in 2008. And I think he was trading full-time professionally by 2009. And he's been teaching you guys since 2010, 11. Omar was the same. Judith was the same. People are, are able to take the training that we give if they put the time and the effort in and actually come out the other end as decent professional traders who are doing this for a living. Right, thanks so much to everybody. We will catch you all next week. As I said, this will be available in the website tomorrow, and we will send out an email and also there will be messages in the forum. Catch you all later. Goodbye.